Hi everyone, thanks for coming back to another episode of the Aussie Lawn. Um, decided to do an occasional Wednesday pop-up series called Workshop Wednesdays where we're going to actually focus on the machinery side of, of turf. So, you know, how to do this, how to do that. Today what I've got for you is I've got a uh, Victor lawnmower here. It's a four-stroke uh, running a Briggs & Stratton motor. Now, the people that own this mower have asked if I could just give it a check over. It needs a new set of blades, an oil change, and also going to uh, show you how to do a service on the air filter, as this one runs a, uh, a foam filter, so there's actually a way to uh, properly clean and re-oil these things, so we'll, we'll touch on that, and also cover safety precautions and things to be aware of uh, when you're sort of playing with machinery and blades and stuff like that, because there's always room for uh, things to go, go bad if you get it wrong. So stay tuned and uh, I'll show you how I do things. Righto, so this is our patient for the episode. It's the Victor Lawn Keeper Edition. Now, rule number one when you're doing any work on any machine, mower, whatever, is to disconnect that spark plug. Now, I go as far as actually removing the plug because especially on these Briggs and Stratton motors, they've got it, they, they have the ability to uh, still start if you haven't fully removed that uh, that plug, uh, that cap on the end of the plug. And secondly, if the actual uh, insulator cap on the end has any splits in it at all, that spark will find its way through that split. And if it's in the right spot next to that plug, the machine will still run, even though you've uh, disconnected the plug. So actually, let me just show you that now, because there's probably some people at home going, oh, that won't be the case, that's not gonna happen. So, well, let's put it to the test and see if we can get it to start without the uh, high tension lead fully attached to the spark plug. Righto, hands up, who learned something right there? because I'm sure there's a few of you thinking that Brenton's just lost the marbles and what sort of a lawnmower I was going to run with the spark plug essentially disconnected. Well, that one, that one did. Um, hit the like button. Just just hit it. Just Yeah, just do it. Um, yeah, how's that for a bit of self-promotion? Look, let's move on. Now because we're going to actually... Uh, change the oil as well as the blades. I'm actually going to drain the oil first. Now, it's it's pretty important with these four-stroke set. If you're going to tilt these mowers or these engines, that you tilt them the right direction. Because if you don't, uh, and you get oil through the carburetor or stuff like that, you've created a bit of a nightmare for yourself. And there's a lot of stuffing around and cleaning out and uh, what uh, so forth to, uh, to get this thing going again. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the oil out. Um, and then we're going to then it won't matter which way we turn it, but I'm still going to try to turn it the correct way. Well, I will turn it the correct way, uh, which is ideally uh, spark plug or cylinder head facing upwards. Um, but you can also tip it on the side of the oil uh, filler. So probably do that to get this blade base plate off and uh, swap these blades out. But be sure to put oil in before you start it because that's just going to end really nasty. Okay, I like to use one of these uh, Briggs and Stratton oil removal kits. You can just tip these things up on their side and, and uh, drain the oil, but this, this is probably a bit easier for most people and uh, a lot less uh, lot less lifting involved. So yeah, let's, um, let's remove all the oil and hook on with the blades. Righto, so we'll stick the uh, oil cap back on for the moment just because we're going to be tipping it on this side so we're going to tip it this way to access the blades um, there may still be a tiny bit of oil residue that i don't really want on my concrete in the uh, garage floor okay so pretty much all australian lawn mowers will have uh, a blade disc or a blade holder uh, whereas a lot of american style mowers just have a blade bar with the blade is basically the thing that attaches to the motor uh, you'll see down here uh, so the blades here actually, uh, this part, and this is the, uh, the blade holder. And some of these will hold four blades, some will be a circular disc. This one is uh, a bit more of a uh, basic basic design, but still every, every bit is uh, functional. So uh, 9 16th bolt, um, 
uh, socket. It's what we're going to use to remove that, that disc holder. Gives us better access to the blades. So, yep, let's hook on with that. Okay, as you can see, these blades are absolutely stuffed. Uh, yeah, this mower doesn't have an easy life, uh, as you can see here, but it's been a reliable machine and uh, after this bit of tender loving care, it'll go back to giving trouble free service again. So we'll get these old blades off and we'll have a quick talk about the, um, the importance of buying quality blades as well. Right, so we're ready to install the new blades and before we do that I just want to touch on uh, all blades are not created equal. Uh, these ones here, these these are not actually a genuine blade but an Australian made blade. Um, GA Spares is a great company for uh, supplying the Australian market with uh, good quality products. Now, you see the blades on eBay and you buy a ridiculous amount of blades for not much money but look, seriously guys, this packet of blades from my local mower store cost me $9, I think it was. They're made in Australia, we're supporting Australia. I think right now there's not a better time. Now, the other thing to remember, the most important thing, Australian blades that are made here um, are covered by the Australian standards. So there's actually a safety standard when it comes to blades. It's certain, uh, what's the word? Uh, hardness of blade, hardness of steel, quality of steel. The last thing you want to do, the last thing I want to do is, is, is save 2 or $3 on some blades from China and uh, end up one of them failing during a mow and uh, one of my toes being no longer attached to my foot because I kind of like having 10 toes, five on each side and uh, I want to keep it that way. So, you know, plus I'm supporting supporting Australia. Great thing to do, especially right now with the uh, the virus that's doing the rounds. Right, that's enough of the, the blade story. Let's get them on and uh, get it back on the machine. I'll quickly just run through the, the sequence of these blades. These, uh, obviously this is um, for Victor can be Victor two stroke or four stroke, uh, it makes no difference. So basically, uh, make sure that you're putting the blades the right way on, your blade holder, your disc. Uh, so what we've got here is a blade here. So first thing, we've got a, oh, bring it into focus. Okay, first thing here, we've got a bolt. So we're gonna put this little washer face down over the bolt. It's hard to do this and hold a camera. Um, so when we, hang on a second, right, yep, sorry. Yep, okay. So that's what it's gonna look like underneath. Then we're gonna position it like that. Put the washer and then the nut with the uh, nylon thread at the end. So that's the correct way and you'll see the this little bit here is uh, the bit that actually helps, well, throws the grass into the catcher, that's your lift, that's your lift part of the blade to uh, move grass into the catcher. Right, eight, let's cut onto a time lapse, we'll get this on and, and uh, move on to the next part of the job. Okay, so at this point now, uh, you're right to put, chuck this uh, back under the machine. So we're just going to reverse the process, obviously, as, as, as the last time. And that's as complicated as changing the blades can be. Look, there's probably a little bit of strength uh, required to removing this off the machine. Uh, and a lot of care because we're working with still sharp and potentially rusty objects. So you don't want to uh, be doing yourself any harm. If in doubt, look, please take it to your local mower store. But I just sort of do this as a bit of a uh, video that it's really not that hard, it's not that scary and um, yeah, it might just encourage you to have a go yourself and um, you'd be surprised, you really will, after you do it once or twice and you'll be like, wow, this isn't such a big deal after all. Okay, so that's all there is to changing the blades. If you can operate um, a socket set, swing off a few spanners uh, and you got a little bit of strength about you, you can uh, swap these out yourself pretty easy. All we've got left to do now is top this up with oil. So it'll take about 600 mils metric or uh, 20 fluid ounces imperial. And that is pretty standard for most Briggs and Stratton motors up to about six and a half horsepower, I think. But um, yeah, just double check for yourself. Uh, but that's 
that's my understanding. Everything up to about six and a half horsepower um, are those those capacities. Now, okay, last but not least, we're going to uh, clean out this air filter. Now, this particular mower's got a little little party hat that's got to come off first before we can get off this uh, air filter cover. It's sort of a bit of a pain, I guess, but uh, that's what we've got to do. Okay, some of you that are familiar with Briggs and Stratton motors are probably just uh, a lot more familiar with exactly what was hiding under that cover with this motor. It's been around a long time and uh, reliable little unit. I'm not going to lie to you guys. <laughs> um, I did actually uh, already do this air filter, but I forgot to film it. So I'm really just redoing this for the for the demonstration purposes. Um, this was absolutely caked in in dirt and grime and and so forth, but. Um, as I said, look, I'll, uh, I'm going to do it again just for the uh, just for the lesson on how to how to service these correctly, um, and then yeah, because basically the, these foam filters, unless they're actually disintegrated or broken, uh, they're designed to be reused. They wash them out with some fuel, and uh, then re-oil them, and that's all you do with them. The um, the paper ones, obviously, you can either give them a shake out or you chuck them in the bin and get new ones. Right, so all you want to do is just get a little bit of unleaded fuel. Make sure you're using gloves because the fuel's a solvent. It's not good to get on your hands and stuff like that. Um, so a little tiny bit. Doesn't need to be a lot. Um, because all we're, all we're doing, see a little tiny bit in the bottom of this bucket here. Uh, and basically just drop your air filter in and uh, so what we're doing is we're just basically uh, rinsing it in the fuel. And what it does is it's going to, uh, you can see, it's just going to take all the crap out. And um, that's all we're going to do. So that's as, that's as hard as it to clean the to clean it. Removes all the, uh, the old oil and all the old uh, dust and dirt and, and, and muck. So that only, being a solvent based, that'll only take you know, 30 seconds or so to fully fully dry out. Um, if you're worried about disposing the fuel anywhere, if you leave it in a safe, sunny spot, that little bit of fuel will actually uh, evaporate in not a lot of time. But as I said, make sure it's a safe spot away from uh, away from anyone or any problems. Righto. So once that. Uh, excess fuel has dried out of the uh, foam filter here. Uh, we're just going to add a little tiny bit of engine oil to the filter. So we're just going to make sure that's yep, in spring. Um, going to put just a little bit like that. Then we're just going to squeeze it through and uh, make sure that it's all the way mixed mixed through. We'll put a little bit on this other side. We don't, want to, we don't want it dripping out of here. Uh, it's sort of the happy, the happy medium. A bit the case of less is more each time and just add, if it's squishing out, if it's coming out when you're squishing it up in a ball and there's oil coming out, you've overdone it. My advice there is to uh, wash it out in fuel and, and start again because um, you've got too much on there. Um, so that might just, we might just put a little tiny, a little tiny bit more in that. Um, so yeah, as much as I squeeze, squeeze in that, um, it's not, it's not oozing back out. So it's soaking into the foam. It's doing its job, and that's uh, part of the filtration system on these these foam type Briggs and Stratton's foam type filters. So it's probably that's probably near. See that there? That's probably now a little, little too much. Um, just marginally, but it'll be, that will be okay. So we'll pop him back in his little 
filter holder here. Just goes there like that. Check the underside there. Very good. Top cap goes on. Stick the bolt through now, I'll stick the bolt through later. And uh, back on the machine, we'll put it. And that's all there is to uh, servicing the air filter. The only final thing to point out is um, make sure when you reattach your little filter cartridge that you get in the right way. See some people stick them on like this. It's not the right way. The, the, the pointy triangle bit goes to the back of the machine. Pops on there like that. The bolt goes back down through with your screw. Goes back down there like that. And uh, you've now learn how to change the uh, or service the air filter in your uh, Briggs and Stratton motor. Right, well that's all I've got for you for the first episode of Workshop Wednesday. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. There'll be more episodes to come in the coming weeks. As I said, heading into winter it's going to be uh, a little bit easier because there won't be a lot of grass stuff to do so what I'll do there is uh, we'll do a few jobs on machinery I've got here I've got to do a deck rebuild on that John Deere right on the lawnmower of mine and uh, a few other bits and pieces anyway guys look have a great day wherever you're watching from we'll see you next time on the Aussie lawn thank you for watching